You see, for years now, the most common statement I've heard when it comes to fishing in the lakes is, oh, it's not what it once was. There used to be so many more bigger fish back in my day or when I was a kid, blah, 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 which all relate to the fishing being so much better back in the day. And although all the lakes have been mentioned in this way, there's one particular lake that keeps popping up in these conversations and I can't seem to escape thinking about it. So over the next few sessions, that's what we're gonna find out and uncover today. Are there any giant pike left lurking in this lake? Oh, how I bloody hope there is. And although when it comes to fishing, you can't promise the fish you're gonna catch, what I can promise is that all of the hours, the blood, the sweat, the tears, and effort that are required to catch such fish, oh, they're gonna be put in, and they're gonna be put in hard, so let's go. Here we are. It's mild. The water with my feet in is very cold. And the wind, well, the wind's not existent, but the ripple that's trying to blow is coming from the east. And if the sayings are true that when the wind's from the east, the fishing's at its least, then today might prove difficult. But that's not to worry about. We're not just concerned about the wind today because we've got beautiful overcast skies, which is feeling really pikey. And it's the first day that is really mild and it's almost starting to feel like the early signs of spring are coming. This is the first time I've been out in just a flea since for what feels like months and months and months. But even though we're without wind today, it's actually quite nice because we've been getting hammered by some horrible windstorms, which has been making white horses rush down the whole length of the lake, which as a result has got this lake super, super murky. It's like a silty, bluey tinge color. And this lake is never like that. It is normally so clear, so crystal clear. So that's gonna be a testing factor of today. And I presume the first thing you come to think of when we're gonna be throwing lures today is gonna to be big, big, big lures. You know, 30 minimum, up to 40, up to 50 centimeters. But that's not the case, right? Because all I wanna do is present a lure to the fish that is gonna be natural. These big fish that are wise aren't gonna look at it and think, hmm, dunno, dunno, dunno. So what am I gonna be doing? Well, I've got everything covered and I've got it all in this brand new bag here. This is the Move backpack from LMAB and it is full of everything. It's actually my first proper fishing backpack that I've got and you can just put absolutely everything in it. You can clip anything you want on it here, strap anything on. I tend to strap my little med kit bag here as well onto this bit. And then there's endless other pockets. Now I like to be nice and super organized. You've got glasses, oh, I've got all my filming packs in here. I've got all my cameras and stuff in the top part and then in the bottom, you've got room for the biggest, largest box that I've got and it fits all the lures in that I want. Now we've got from the top ranges up to about 30 centimeters with the Kofi Roach. We've got the drunk twisters, curly tails, paddle tails, larger paddle tails, smaller paddle tails, even down to some of the new flash vibes. And of course, one of the most blown up lures ever for catching big fish, the Mura smells. You see, the thing is about this time of year is that you know the fish are gonna be shoaled up and you know that they're gonna be in all sorts of different sizes. Now, a lot of your minnows and things like that, they might not be around so much this time of year. And that's why we're gonna be staying around 15, 12 centimeters is the smallest. But this is exactly what is gonna be swimming around, exactly what's natural and exactly what isn't gonna to be too much for the fish to think, mm, and it's not gonna to be too little for the fish to think, well, that's just not even gonna be worth my energy. So if I can stand out from the crowd and present small natural fish that they're gonna be feeding on anyway, we might just get a better chance. The nerves are on, the anticipation is so there. Let's get it out. Let's get to the bottom. But really, I think that this is just gonna be a whole learning game. I'm gonna be putting so much time and effort into thinking about what I'm doing, the way I'm moving lures, the way I shouldn't be moving lures, and how a fish strikes or a fish takes if I get one. And I think that's really important to learn because when you're coming out here for one bite and one bite only, you wanna be understanding the mechanics and the way the fish are behaving on the day. And it's certainly easy to stop thinking and sort of forget about the fact that you're trying to do that when you get a fish strike. Because like we all know, as soon as you get a fish take, your heart's just pumping, the blood's thrown through you, the adrenaline's sky high again. But if you can just try and think, what was I doing five seconds before that fish took, then that can make the difference and really help you learn and an understanding of what's going on and for how you can continue to do that to catch more fish. I think we're after that first bit of confidence from the first fish today. I think once we get that, we can get a whole lot of information about the way the fish has struck the lure, the way I got it with the methods I've been on about. And really that's gonna give me all the confidence I need when I'm fishing so I can really home in and try and get that fish that we're here for. Oh, what is that? Oh, no way, no way, no way. I don't believe it. There's no way. Oh my days. What is the pike doing there? <gasps> no, 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 no way. Come on. Come on. Oh, I do not believe that. I do not believe that. 
I mean, I'm out in like 40 foot of water here. Why is a pike doing right at the surface? No way. Oh my word. Oh, I did not believe that. Where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, the first sign of fish. The first time for the heart start pumping. Oh, are you joking? Oh, it's so exciting. I've never seen that happen in open water like this. Normally if I'm in summer, spring, maybe early autumn and I'm in the shallow water of 20 foot, you'd see that, but not over in 40, 50 foot of water. There's no way I've ever seen that before. Oh man, what on earth were you doing? Oh. Open water's not the one. Then we're going to push up into some bays now. My thinking is if the wind's been pushing all these fish and it's only just stopped today, but it's been pushing them all up into the edges, and especially the small fish that can't really withstand the constant force on them so much. I think the bays are going to be where the fish could be at and they've not yet moved out. Let's go try. And so we're going to be coming up into reeds and bays like these, dropping the lure down and seeing if there's any pike. Now that the sun's out completely, if there any pike out some bay, then maybe. Maybe there are. Uh, oh, 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 a pike's just chased that. Oh, oh, my word. Oh, oh, my word. That was straight on it. Just as I was saying, are we going to be able to find something sunbathing now that we're in the shallow bays, now that the sun's out on it? And we do first cast. Oh, come on. Second sign of a fish now, one that was a lot more homed in on taking that lure. We are getting there. We are slowly getting there. Surely we can't be far off having the third as a strike. And we've came to some of the shallowest parts of this lake that I know now is literally a few feet deep, but this is so cool. It's like a little forest down here at this end. We've got trees that are just barely poking out the water. We've got big open parts of weed that might just be holding the fish on the warm mud. And if not, it's an absolute blanket down there of green shrubbery and weeds and logs. So if they're not on the open areas, I'm sure they're gonna be tucked up in there where it's nice and warm too. There's nothing directly in it. However, I think just on the edge, it goes from really shallow to then suddenly thick weeds that drop off off into a nice sandy bottom and I think we're going to work our way along here. I can't see the bottom anymore but this is looking nice. I think we're going to have the best of both worlds with the temperature and the drop off and the depth and I think we already know that there's pike in these shallow waters heating up so it's just a matter of covering the ground now to find out if there's going to be any more stacked up and if any of them are going to be chasing down just like that one did so aggressively. days oh you could see it so clearly in front of me oh the colors on it were beautiful but I think it literally looked up with me with that little corner eye and we just sort of went oh had a moment of pausing with each other <laughs> and then he gave it legs he was out of there just as we said <laughs> just as we said let's see if any are chasing down as aggressively as that last one I'd imagine it's kind of unlikely he's gonna come back though seeing my ugly mug having a little stare off. I think I've won and he's back down.
And just like that, Groundhog Day has commenced. It feels like I can't escape this thick blanket of clouds when I'm out filming these days. And although it's really cool to be out in and getting some shots in, I do not like it when it comes to fishing, purely because of the light basis. The light levels have changed so much. You know, we've not got this ideal bit of sun that the pike are going to be coming into the bays in and sunbathing in. So I really am hoping that the sun's going to come out today. But by looking at the sky today, I do not believe that's going to be that likely. So we're not going to hold on to that and we're going to crack on and try and overcome this problem with some simple tips and tricks. I think what's really cool when you're out fishing in days like these and Mother Nature's throwing all sorts of problems at you is that if this was a story, all these problems faced, all these challenges overcome generally lead up to a well built up ending. And so that's what I've got in mind today to keep me spurred on, to keep my confidence up and get that motivation up when needed. We've already got a few things to be setting up here. We've got a few things to sort out on the rods. But I think really day one in a nutshell, it was a blur. It was a really quick session. I was pushed for time, you know, life challenges overcomes. But this weekend, which is the following weekend after, we've got two whole days. We've got two whole days of fishing. And I think that's going to be the money maker when you're out on a search for a big fish like this. It's all about casting. It's all about time. It's all about the effort put in. So I think our chances of getting it, or at least coming by it, have increased by a nice amount. But one positive of a nice gap in between fishing sessions is that I've actually had some time to reflect on how last session went, what I think I might do differently today, you know, getting away from the deep depths to start with and working right over to the shallow bays. I think with the constant mild temperatures we've had, although it's not been really warm, so the water's not been able to heat up like it would a hot bath, it's been steady and the air temperature's been quite warm on days where it's even felt a little nippy because of the cold wind. So I think due to the warmer weather, and I've seen a lot of people discussing this as well on social media, that the pike are maybe getting a little early compared to last year on where they go to spawn. So although it feels weird and a little bit uncomfortable straying away from the sort of 30 to 40 foot deeper water, I think I'm going to be hugging in and staying close to these banks today. Now if I do think they're going to be spawning, you know, if I see signs of actual spawn, anything like that, we're going to stop right away. However, if they're just nesting up and they're just getting ready and I think it's safe to continue fishing, we will do just that and I think it's got to be only fair that we put a little pike pattern on today. It can have such a devastating effect when it comes to this time of year. And that is why we are going to be using the biggest drunk bait, the 20 centimeter one, in ASOX E Mills pattern. There we go. Right, we're starting off in the middle of this bay and we're going to drift with the wind rather nicely and just send cast after cast after cast. When I reel in into straight like this and you get a take, your rod just jolts forward normally and had, why, why I was doing it then, I do not know. But I love to have my rod to the side. Now when you get a rod to the side, you're going to get a much better indication of a bite because it's going to be pulling the rod to the side and not just jolting the line forward. A lot of the tension is going to be on the line there. So you don't get that initial hit on the hooks. Good sign though. Good sign that we are in the right depth and they are willing to take this lure. There we go. Look at that. Troy it hasn't half hit that. So let's use the other rod to our advantage. Already set up. Drunk Twister, Fire Tiger, Golden Roach, Multivibe, Chatterbait on the front and see if we can get it to come back and hit this. If it's already fired up, then it's not going to be too bothered about how aggressive this lure is. This is just going to fire it up even more. What is wrong with this? What is wrong with this? I'm cursed. I'm cursed. I am officially cursed. So, let me get out there. I bet that was the fish that took that lure. That was a nice fish. Looked thick throughout and it had some nice length to it. Maybe 80, 90. That could have been a nice fish. <sighs> you are kidding me. If that happens again, 
I'm gonna throw myself off at it. It's so cool watching them come up like that. They're so fixated on the lure. They don't see anything else apart from it. Then they pause, see my fat ass in the bloody silhouette, and then they bugger off. Oh, you are kidding me. You are kidding me. It's nice though having little bits of confidence that come up like that, knowing you are doing the right thing. Your retrieve's right, your lure's right, you know, X, Y, Z are all right. And then you get blessed by the little things like that to let you know they're doing the right thing to get to keep you spurred on in this horrible weather. I tell you what, it's an addictive style of fishing. I forget to look up and take in the beauty half the time. I'm so fixated. I'm looking down at the line, looking down at my rod, thinking and feeling everything through the, this finger and all sorts. And there's not much else in the world that would carry on doing this for. What a bloody beautiful sport. All being said, there's only so many things I can say about it until I get pissed off about not catching. <laughs> It's wet. It's got very wet. It's got very windy as well, actually, which is why I've just pulled up to the shore for a quick lunch stop. I'm not going to get disheartened, but man, I'm starving. I am absolutely starving. The birds are rowdy. Everything's kicking off apart from the fishing, but we're yet to get prime time yet. It's midday. Things get a little slow which is to be expected on this time of year. But the good news is the sun's not setting until around half five now. It didn't get dark until about six. So with it being around half 12 now, we have hours left of fishing. Behind me, you see the bay that I've been plowing through and casting through for hours now with no success. And so for that reason, we're gonna leave these geese behind and we're gonna go to the other side where hopefully some fish are gonna be. Lunch. You have been great. Fishing, we're gonna make you great. This is the mindset, this is the attitude we are going with. Oh dear. Oh. Jake my leg like a dog. Oh! Come on then. Let's have it. Okay, we are on to a fish, we are on to a fish! This is amazing! Oh, we're finally on to a fish. Oh, there it is, we've got a bit of colour here. Now, is that wrapped up? If it is, I need to be careful on how I bring this in. Uh, it is a tiny bit. There we go, there we go. Finally, we're on to a fish. Come on, Mr. Jack, come on. There we go. He's in the net. Oh, at last, we finally <laughs> land a pike. Oh my days. And it's nowhere near the size that we've been targeting, but we've got some good confidence and we're now hooked on the feeling of getting a pike again. Oh, thank the Lord. It's a super nice jack though. Here he is. What a beautiful little Jack Pike, and we're not going to mess around with him, we're going to bray on, and we're going to try to see if the one that's going to eat this guy's down there. Hey, it's not much, and it's definitely not what we came for, but my word does it feel good after getting a fish after one and a half days of fishing. Oh. Oh, it felt so good. I didn't have a clue what was going on at first because it took it on the way down. I felt the slightest knock in my reel, thinking it was just the line getting caught on the end of an eye, maybe. And then I started to reel in, and there we go, we got a little jack. Definitely put a massive brightener on the day, although it's still incredibly dull, and we've got cloud after cloud after cloud just pouring on over us. Absolutely dripping wet full of rain. I think it'd be rude not to go give it a few more tries just to see if there is one big fish down there. Let's carry on. Come 
Yes! And there's a fish from it. No! 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 No, 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 no. Oh dear. Oh, we hooked up. I felt the strike. I felt everything. Oh. You are kidding me. <laughs> oh. Let's have a look. Uh, tiny, tiny little teeth marks. It's just barely even hit the lure. What a failure of today. We ran out of time. Preparing through away. I've got to go get the dog. But it is just grueling weather today. Forecast says it's going to clear tomorrow. I really hope it does. And that's where we're going to meet you again. Back out on the water. Hopefully we can get the main camera out. Hopefully we can get the drone out. Hopefully the sun's going to be shining. Hopefully it is vastly different from today. Because it has been dreadful. Oh. That could not have gone any less planned. With the weather getting absolutely terrible, and of course it starts to rain a little less now that I'm in on the water's edge, but this leaves a massive window open for tomorrow. I know if the weather's gonna be better, if the forecast doesn't lie, fingers crossed. Day three and welcome back. I am tired, I am frustrated, I have no energy. Everything went right on day one apart from landing that fish, but it was perfect. We got a glimpse of the fish around here, we got to know a bit about the water, what they're behaving like, where they are. So for day two, I felt really good. And with the week gap we had in between sessions, I had a lot of time to think what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, how I wanted to execute the day, and I felt really good. That's until we got to day two. What a disaster. I've not had a session like that in a long time. Stressful, frustrating, nothing went right. We got soaked to the bone and the cameras got soaked to the motherboards. We've been losing cameras left, right and centre. And I've nearly been losing the will to live in the same way. And although in the moment, the last thing I wanted to do was carry on going, we gave it our best shot. And once I got home from that, I'd realised I'd learnt a lot from that session, even if it didn't go the way I wanted it to go at all. Which brings us rather nicely onto the third and final day of fishing. Man, no words can describe how excited I am, how nervous I am, how relieved I am to finally have the conditions on our side. This is pike weather. We've got the best wind from the west at around eight to 12 miles an hour on the water's surface. So although we haven't wet a line to see what it's gonna be like, we've got really high hopes for today. And like I've said, we can't promise this monstrous fish is gonna come out. But after some time of reflection, after some more research, I can more than confidently say, I can promise to put every ounce of effort in that I have today. It's a shame this is the last day, but it is what it is. We've got timing to meet. I've got work to go back to. Those disasters with parking, those disasters with trying to get here, just everything went tits up. So when I drove down today the road and I seen the parking lay was free, I let out the biggest cheer. Could this be the luck turning? Could this just be a wild blessing? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's go. Now I've made up a new lure for today. We're gonna go with the same pike approach. I want big, I want loud with rattles, and I want a lot of water displacement. And I think this is what is gonna tick all those boxes for me. I gave it a good testing last night and it swims beautifully. Whether it's straight retrieve, fast, slow, pauses, I've got it all down to a T with this. And so, the first cast is out of the last attempt. Oh man, the heart is going. The line is fading out, the hands are shaking. Gonna need full strength on the shoulders today. We are putting in some number of casts today, whether my shoulders, my body, my physical state likes it or not. I am ready for this. I am ready.
Right, let's start the move. Funny one really now because I've drifted almost the whole length of the bay that I said I was going to be passing down and we've had absolutely nothing. No sniffs, no follows, no nothing. And it's at this point really where you get questioning and you think, is it time to change? Am I just not in the right place? Have I thrown a lure over them and have been loads of pike here but I'm not throwing the right thing? Is it the size of the lure, not necessarily the colour of the lure or the profile of the lure? Is it the weight that I've got on the lure? There's a massive thing now going on where it's all about change the weight, not the bait. I don't know, but it's fair to say that something needs to change. What that is, well, that's the difficult part. That's the million dollar question and the million dollar answer. It's in the general direction. Ooh. I don't know what to do. Oh, the light is fading. And I don't know what else to do. I really don't. I am just head down, focus, cast, retrieve, screw thinking about anything else. Come on now, surely it comes together. Just surely, oh I beg. I desperately, desperately beg. Oh, all we want now is a fish, just to reward our hard work. And we are happy to leave. Ooh, what was that in? We just wanted a fish. Yes, and we've got one. Oh my word, we found them. We found them. Oh. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, you are just exactly the opposite of what this whole video is about. But right now, oh, it's fair to say that we do not care at all. Oh, you wanted that. Oh, where's the lure? You beauty. Oh, my word. Oh. You could not have came at a better time, my friend. You really do not know how much you mean. Right. Best way to unhook these fish that come out on the side and have choked it, push down a little and just push upwards at the same time. You, my friend, are incredibly welcome. Look at your little waving you, <laughs> waving his tail to the camera. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. Well, to put the word monster in the title is a bit of a juxtaposition compared to that fish. However, 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 people, what's important to note is that we've actually just caught a pike. Uh, <laughs> so we can do it. And until it gets dark, we are out here and I am not moving. And now, maybe now, maybe now, we can pick out a little pattern and catch a few more. That, it's all about the strike for me. That one just was barely there. It must have slack lined me quite a lot because I could just barely feel it on the strike. I had to really reel in to get the, some weight of the fish. Oh, granted, there's not a lot of weight on that fish, but, but oh man, thank you, thank you. For those wondering how I fly my drone whilst I'm out here. Oh, with great hands. <laughs> oh, people. People, people, people. What a fantastic few days of fishing. Oh, it's been up and down the whole time. And I didn't think I'd be saying fantastic after attempt to. 
I certainly didn't think I'd be saying it. After soaking all the camera gear, finding out that the main camera's now broke and losing a whole lot of footage. But for some reason, this has been well and truly brilliant. I've learned a whole lot about persevering, doing difficult things, being out of my comfort zone. I almost feel as though it's appropriate to apologise for the bare minimum number of fish. The amount of interactions we've had that have just fell through, it's so frustrating. But the classic old saying, that's fishing for you, comes into play a whole lot there. So, ladies and bloody gentlemen, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, stick around and hit the subscribe button. Tight lines if you're going out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.